teach us tonight if I can and I'm not going to hold you hold you much tonight I want to teach something tonight to you <coughs> on one scripture turn with me if you would in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and I want to look at verse 15 tonight 2 Timothy chapter 2 and let's look at verse 15 are you there? The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This scripture here in the Bible is, one, is at least one of the most important in the entirety of the Word of God. And that to which the believer, you and I, should diligently heed to. I want you to understand that tonight. This one scripture here is very important. There's a lot of scriptures. The whole Bible is important to us. But this one here we ought to heed to diligently tonight. The word study the word study, in its true meaning, is making every effort. Making every effort. Who does not need to be ashamed? In the Greek means not to be put to shame. This part of the scripture means a workman who has no cause for shame when his work is being inspected. Thank you, brother. I got one amen out of that. Rightly dividing in the Greek means who correctly handles or holds a straight course in the Word of God. It's a plowman who drives a straight furrow. It means to cut a road in a straight direction across country that is forested or otherwise difficult to pass through so that the traveler might be go directly to his destination. Growing up out of high school, one of my first jobs was working for a man over in Bailu, had a big business over there laying tile out into fields. And he hired me. And one of my job, my job, my only job that I had was to hook up the, the plastic line on a big roll and drive a tractor and find me one point and drive straight to it. There's times when I would stretch out that plastic growing up. Then I would get off and I'd go back to the, the, the trencher and talk to the guy and I would look and I would look, wow, my line ain't very straight. The, the, the plastic was going this way and the ditcher was going this way. And, and the, the man the, who owned the company would get mad. You know, especially because Sometimes he would run the ditcher. He wouldn't stop. As long as that thing was digging and putting plastic, he was seeing dollar signs. And he would run over that plastic just for me to cut it and run down there and get it over on this side. Come on. And I learned real quick to find me a point and drive straight to that point and let that plastic reel out. This is what the Lord is trying to show us tonight. That you and I, church, are going to go, and we are going to go directly to that destination that He has for us. It is a road that goes straight to its goal. 
without being turned aside by worldly debates or impulsive talk. I want to talk to you now, tonight just for a few moments on this subject. subject. Let's make every effort. Let's make every effort. Bow your heads with me tonight. Heavenly Father, as we come tonight to teach of your word, help us tonight to rightly divide it, dear God, that we understand what your word says. This one verse, what you are trying to tell us. And Lord, I give you praise tonight. I give you glory. I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to break this one scripture tonight into three different parts. Three different parts. The first part I want to talk to you about is study to show thyself approved unto God. The second part I want to talk to you about is a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And the last part is rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the first part says study. The scripture said study to show thyself approved unto God. Refers again to a workman who has been put to the test, that's you and I, meeting, meeting the specifications, and you and I have won the approval of the one who has subjected us to that test. Amen. Come on. A workman who you and I will be put to a test. Church, meeting, and we're going to meet the specifications that the Lord has set before us. And we have won the one, one who has uh, subjected us to that test. We're going to win His approval. Yes, amen. amen. When every believer stands at the judgment seat of Christ, as every believer shall, those who attempted to please men rather than pleasing the Lord are going to be in for a rude awakening. In other words, they will lose much reward. Amen? Amen. You and I are not here today to please one another. Amen. I'm here to please God. That's right. Amen. I'm here to be a blessing to you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to preach the Word, teach you. I'm here to encourage you, love you, pray for you. But I'm not here to please you. That's right. Amen. 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 I want to please the one who is putting me to a test. And that one is Jesus Christ. Amen. The great dividing line for all believers and especially preachers of the gospel is this. Do I seek the approval of men or do I seek the approval of God? One cannot have both. Come on. One cannot have both. To compromise the Word of God to the slightest degree weakens the believer to the degree of the compromise. It is not possible to do such and lose nothing. Something will always be lost. Amen. The word study, as Timothy gave it here, used in verse 15, does not refer to the work which a minister does with his books in his place of study. Important as that is, there's times when you can ask Sister Angela, I'll have about four or five commentaries, Bibles, all over the kitchen table, studying. I want to know what the Word of God says. I want to rightly divide the Word of God. That's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about here is rather means try hard. Study means to try hard, press through, make your best effort to show yourself worthy of God's approval. Amen. Amen. I'm here 
wanting God to be pleased with me, Sister Gloria. I'm not here to please nobody. I want to hear Him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's what study means. To see. I'm studying to make sure I'm doing everything that is pleasing unto God. Amen? you got to be pleasing unto God, church. Amen? Don't think you're going to do something and please me. Ah. No! You are to please God. Amen? You and I, we need to make every effort, every possible effort to please God. This is what He means. And He said the word approval. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. Okay? The word approval implies being tried, proved as precious metals are proved before they ex are accepted as genuine. Come on. Yes, amen. You got to go through a purifying yes, yes, time. Amen. amen. God's got to purify you. Amen. He will only trust a soldier. Amen. Use a soldier he can trust. We have to go to a place of time that we are approved by God. Come on. Amen. And God is looking for that. That's why Paul said in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy 6 and 12, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. we got to keep on the fighting. Amen. That's what God's looking for is where is your faith at tonight? we got to be approved. This means that there must be an eager, an active, intense determination to live a life pleasing to God. Amen? Come on, when I wake up every morning and I lay my head down, I want to wake up and say, God, this is the day that you have given me. I want to please you. I want to do everything possible that I can with your help to please you. That's my determination, intense determination to live a life pleasing to God. Have I let him down? Oh boy. Come on. We all have let him down. But he's never let me down. We must not only yield to the Holy Spirit's fullness, trusting to produce in us that love that God is, but we must definitely will to be loving and try to be loving. The doing of one's best. The doing of one's best means that the living of the Christian life is an urgent matter. One must with intensity of desire will to live the highest type of Christian life that you and I possibly can. The Christian must do his best to live a life pleasing to his Lord. Amen? This is what he was saying. Study to show thyself approved under God. Amen? Not under Pastor Gerald, but under God. Amen? Second part. Says a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Now, this here carries the ideal that if the individual is approved by God, he will not be ashamed. Hallelujah! Amen! As well, he can be approved by God only on one basis. The believer must, you and I must keep our faith strictly in the cross of Christ exactly as Paul proclaims to do in verses 11 and 13. He said it is, it, is, it, it, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. Amen. If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. If we believe not, yet He abideth faithful, He cannot deny us himself. Faith in the cross of Jesus Christ guarantees church spiritual success in every capacity. 
And my faith was in Jesus and Him crucified. And my faith was in the cross of Christ. Amen. Come on. I, anything that God, I do in the capacity, come on, I'm a winner. Amen. Amen. Come on. In, in any capacity. In fact, it is the only such faith which will guarantee success because it has the cross as its proper object. This refers to our continuing to believe in Him and more particular, to believe in Him and more particular, what He has done at the cross on my behalf. Come on. you got to do that. Jesus said in Matthew 10.33, this is what Jesus said. Whosoever should deny me before men, him will also deny before I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Meaning, not so much a denial of Christ per se, but rather a denial of His substitution work regarding the cross. Verse 13 here says, if we believe not, Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Now, there's two, two things to that verse here. The first part means they. Meaning, if we believe not, meaning they, us, believers, okay, no longer believe whether by word, action, or both in what Christ did at the cross as it refers to lost humanity. The second part is that he cannot deny himself. Carries the meaning that if anyone is unbelieving and unfaithful, Christ will remain true to his word. Come on. If we are unfaithful, amen, God is still going to remain to his word. Are you hearing me tonight? He's going to remain to his word, which means that under those circumstances, an individual cannot hope to be saved. It would be a denial of the very nature of Christ to save those who have no faith in his substitutary work on the cross on behalf of lost humanity. Come on. And those that don't want to believe in Jesus Christ and believe in what He did on the cross, they have no hope. They have no hope. They will not be saved. That's what the Word is saying here. He will not deny Himself. He's not going to change His Word. Come on. He's not going to, oh Lord, I, you know, I, I get tired. Well, God's a merciful God. Yes, He is. But He's a God of wrath too. Amen? And we forget that part. We want the, the mercy part. We want Him to, oh yes, bless us and everything's going to be fine and dandy. Amen? But we forget that God is a God of wrath. Amen? Come on, church. And those who will not believe in Jesus and what He did on the cross, amen, there's no hope for Him. And I don't say that braggingly. My heart goes out for those. Amen. That has turned their back upon God. Our family members, you got family members, I got family members. Amen. They know they've been there. They ought to be serving God. But there's going to come a time, church, when it's going to be too late. Amen. They're going to try to call mom. They're going to try to call dad. They're going to try to call sister or brother. They're going to try to call grandma. And the rapture's already taken place and they're gone. And they're nowhere to be found. Come on. It's going to happen. The only thing, the only thing that stands between humanity and eternal hell is one thing. That is the cross of Christ. Amen. Come on, I want you to get that. There's only one thing that stands between you and eternal hell. And that is the cross of Christ. As well, the only thing between the Christian and total defeat is the cross of Christ. Amen? Faith in the cross of Christ 
guarantees spiritual success in every capacity. It is the only such faith which will guarantee success. Because it has the cross as its proper object. If our faith and trust is in anything else than the cross, there is no alternative but to be made ashamed. Come on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Why I am not ashamed today? Because my faith is in Jesus Christ and in the cross. If my faith is not in that, then God makes us ashamed. Amen. Amen. I'm not ashamed today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is so simple because the Christian life will be a life of defeat instead of victory. Victory is guaranteed only according to our proper faith. Come on. You can't have victory no other way. The only way you're going to have victory tonight is if your faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen? And what He did on the cross and who He is. That guarantees you and I victory over everything. I'm successful tonight. Why? Because of Jesus. Amen? It ain't what I did. It's what I've done. Put my faith in Him. He's the one who paid the price. Not me. It is to be noticed the Holy Spirit through Paul used the word workman, which means worker or laborer. The ideal that we are workmen and laborers in His vineyard. Now please notice, <laughs> He didn't say loafers. There's a lot of them in the church world today. They're loafers instead of workmen. It is the business of every believer, not just preachers, to do all that is possible, which means all that within our power to help take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the entirety of the world. Amen? We are to do our part. Each and every one of us are to do our part. Ever how small that part might be. Hence, we are called, and God calls us, workmen. Amen? If your job in the church is to go around and pick up paper, paper off the floor, you're a workman. Your job is to play the drum, you're a workman. Your job is to play the piano, you're a workman. If your job is to be a praying warrior of the church, you're a workman. Amen. Your job is to sing, you're a workman. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Amen. I'm not ashamed. The Lord is not ashamed of me. We have to do our part. As a workman, if we do not present the true Word of God to hurting humanity, our efforts can only be wasted. But as well, are downright harmful to the souls we're seeking to save. Our job is to lead souls to save, to be saved. Amen? The third part tonight, as Paul wrote said here, he said, rightly dividing the word of truth refers to presenting the truth rightly. Not shorting it. Not handling it as a, as a quack. Not making a matter of wordy strife, but treating it honestly and fully in a straightforward manner. I don't know about you, but I feel that it is impossible. Come on, I want you to hear me now. I don't know about you, but I feel that it is impossible for anyone to rightly divide the word of truth unless they fully understand the cross. Come on. 
talking to Brother Rodriguez here a while back. And he said, what are you, what, what is your thinking about going into the new year of preaching? I said, I'm going to preach on the cross. I'm going back to the cross. I'm going to preach it. Amen. Unless we understand what, who Jesus is and what He did on the cross, church, we will not be able, it's impossible to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Unless you know and understand the cross. Who He was and what He did on that cross. Yes, amen. amen. It gives me the right to, amen, come on, to not be ashamed, amen, of Him rightly dividing the word of truth. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed while the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Amen. Somebody ought to shout on that one tonight. Amen. I said the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. But while the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Amen. Amen. In other words, to properly understand the New, one must as well understand the Old too. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. A lot of people say, well, we don't need the old. Yes, we do. That's the roadmap. Yes. Amen. That's the concealed part to the New Testament that's been revealed to us. Amen. We need them both. Amen. If one will understand that Jesus Christ is the very subject of the entirety of the Bible. And more particularly, what He did on the cross. And in His resurrection, then the Bible will be much easier to understand. Amen. When you understand, come on, let me get that again to you. Amen. If one will understand that Jesus Christ is the very subject of the entirety, the old and the new, of the Bible, and more particularly, what He did on the cross, and in His resurrection, then the Bible will be much easier for you and I to understand. Amen. The more I understand the message of the cross, you say, you don't know all the message? No. I'm still learning, church. Amen. You know how I learn? I open this up and let the Word of God be revealed to me. Amen. The more I learn of the cross, the more I learn of what Jesus did. And the more I understand the Old Testament and read and understand the Old Testament and read the New Testament, amen, it makes the Bible easier to understand. Come on. In fact, I do not personally believe that anyone can have a proper understanding of the Word of God if they try to interpret it outside of the cross of Christ. Regrettably, much of the modern church seeks to interpret it solely along the lines of Christ, but with not much weight at all attached to the price he paid. Come on. We forget. We, we, we are, just about anybody asks, do you know Jesus? Oh yeah, I know who he was. But they don't know the price that he paid. Come on. And I thank God He still reveals to me every day, Brother Greg, more of who Jesus is. More of what He did for me. The price that He paid for me. Amen. Come on. When we, we don't understand that we the church world has got it backwards. Oh yes. We know who Jesus is. You know? But they're serving, as Paul said it, another Jesus. I'm serving the one who died on the cross, who rose from the dead, who's alive and well today, who prayed a great price for my redemption. Yes. And I get to know Him more every day. Amen? That's what dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth is all about. If the proper emphasis is not given to His purpose for coming to this world, which is the cross, then we miss the entire new reason of the plan of God as it regards the redemption of mankind. 
Amen. He had to come, church, and go to the cross for you and I, or we would couldn't be saved tonight. Come on. So the only way that one can rightly divide the word of truth is to properly understand what the word of truth actually is. It can be summed up in one verse. Paul said it greatly in 1 Corinthians 2 and 2. He said, For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Right there. Right there. The cross. Him crucified. Amen. If we deny that, come on, we in fact deny Him. Which Paul addressed back in verse 12. He said, If we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. If we deny Him, He also will deny us. The results, to say the least, are not pleasant. Come on. He also, in that case, will deny us. Come on. Don't know about you. As I close. I don't know about you tonight. But I said it earlier. I want Jesus to say to me, one of these glorious days, as He said unto them back in Matthew, 25 and 21. His word, His Lord said unto them, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Amen. How do we get there? How do we get there? Come on. Amen. By studying to show yourself approved under God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, church, placing your faith in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross for us and leaving it there. Amen. And say, God, I don't understand because you and I don't quite understand it all. But God, I don't understand what it's all about. But show me. Amen. Show me. And I want to be approved unto you. Amen. A workman, no matter what it is. If my job is to pick up the paper in the church that people left behind. Amen. I'm going to be a workman for the Lord. I'm going to do it unto you. Amen. Come on, church. Study thyself approved unto God. Not under Pastor Gerald, but under God. I didn't go to the cross. Jesus went to the cross. Put your faith in Him. That's where my faith is. My faith is not in this church. Amen. My faith is in Jesus Christ. Yes, this is what God's called me to do. He's called me to be the workman, to be the pastor of this church. But I can't do it without God. And I can't do it without you. Amen. Each and every one of us has our part. Amen. And when that part is vacant, come on church, the work's not getting done. Amen. Amen. Come on. There's times when you can ask my wife. They don't tell me they didn't come to church, so I'm just going to stay home today. Said, you can't do that. I said, I know it, but I'd like to. Huh? Come on. Come on, church. We all are God and work to do. Amen. And again, let me go back to what I said this morning. Let me compel this one more time to you. Get into your prayer closets and be sensitive to the Spirit. Know what He's talking to you. Know. Amen. You may just hear one little voice, one little whisper. One little thing tug at your heart from God. Don't go, I wonder what. You know, just wait. Just wait. Amen? Just wait. God's going to reveal more to you. Amen? There's things when I've, he, he spoke to my heart, and I'm going, what's going on, God? And he said, just wait. There's more. Amen? Don't you hate when you're watching a movie and it says, continue next week? <laughs> That's how God works sometimes. 
He wants to take you to a place, talk to you, tell you something. He don't give it all to you because you and I, you and I, can't handle it. Come on, we can't handle it. But he gives us bits and pieces of the puzzle. And before you know it, when you get very, I tell you, church, this is my prayer for this year. This is what I'm striving to do. Every day I'm asking God. Amen. I'm One thing I'm telling God, God, there's a new crawl. There's a new church in the cross. Come on. Put that in your prayer too. When you pray, when you pray to tonight, when you pray tomorrow, amen, the next day, say, Lord, the pastor said that there's a new church for us in the cross. I'm going to believe it and stand in the gap with him and make up the heads, amen. We're going to do it together. Because we are all workmen for the Lord. Amen. I want to be approved by Him, church. I want to be approved by Him. I've failed Him so many different times as a pastor, as a, as a husband, as a dad. I've failed. Amen. But I don't want to fail God. I want to hear Him say, well done. Amen. Make every effort. Every effort that you can. Every opportunity you got. Seek His face. Say, Lord, show me. Speak to me. I love you. I honor you. I magnify you. And I just want to be with you all these days. Church, He's coming back. He's coming back. And He's coming back after the church. We are the church, not the building. But I know there's a new church for this, this church right here. There's a new church for us in the cross. Amen? Come on. We're, we're, we're running out of our time here in this building. God's got something greater for us. Amen? And I believe I believe it's soon, very soon. Amen? Why? Because He's watched and seen the faithfulness. He's watched and seen those in the church, as I said this morning, those in the church who have made up the hedges, who got into the gap, who's doing everything that they possibly can to serve the Lord. Have we failed God? Yes, we have. Come on. I'll be the first to raise my hand and say, I have. But make every effort. Make every effort. Amen. To do what God wants you to do. Do it unto the Lord. And watch God bless you. In a mighty way. I pray that you truly enjoyed that message. And I would like to give you an opportunity. If you're strayed away from the Lord. Or feel that you would like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I just ask that you would repeat this simple little prayer with me today. And all you got to do is believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. And you can be born again today. So if you would, just repeat this little prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today as a lost sinner. You, dear God, said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. I am asking you, dear God, to save my soul and to cleanse me from all sin. I am accepting Jesus Christ into my heart and what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary in order to purchase my redemption. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the dead. I have called upon your name as you have said, and I believe that right now I am saved. If you repeated that with me and believe in your heart, you are saved today.